think what you have pretty much managed to summarize is that um, there are many, many factors that have uh, do, do affect um, what could happen between what was appropriated and what was actually remitted. I, I, let me just state them for the record so I'll, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but one of them is um, there were um, changes to the actuarially determined percentage. Now, we understand that the amount of employer contribution for determination of the employer contribution is based on the actuarially determined rate. And that rate has changed at least three or four times, and I think it's still in some, is it, even to this date, it is not consistent. I understand federally funded agencies have their own rate. I think that's about 60%. Um, and then you, you know, it went up from, do you know when it went up, what, what fiscal years and what those percentages were uh, in, in, as they changed? I think that, if I'm not mistaken, the 60% started last year, and prior to that was 37%. Um, but we have judgments from the court that had us hold it at 30 and book the remaining portion as a liability. A lot of these interpretations are what have caused the um, disconnect between retirement fund and the, the government, just because of they're using an actuarially determined rate and we're using something that's either court determined or determined by law as what's set in the budget. And that's one of the reasons we're important. Yeah, um, yeah, and as far as like the latest actuary rate of 60%, paying, payment of something at that higher rate is virtually impossible. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do anything other than pay retirement. And I believe that's one of the reasons why the judge ordered the way he did and kept us at a lower rate because even he knew that was difficult for us. Do you recall when the judge, judge uh, the court's order, um, reduced it from 37% down to 30? I'm gonna guess it was right around when I started, and I think that was around 2011, but I'm guessing I'd have to confirm that to be sure. Yes, I, I think we need to have a clear understanding of the various changes that took place and when they took place in order to be able to accurately reconcile the numbers. Um, I'll open it up to the members right now. Representative Sablon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Secretary, good afternoon. I know these numbers reflect what was transferred. Does finance, I, I know it's hard with the, some of the variables being, being uh, debated, uh, but uh, or challenged like the 60% rate, but this 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 numbers by fiscal year. Uh, does finance have any idea uh, independently of uh, the retirement fund? Uh, how much should have been remitted per fiscal year? Because I'm I'm, I'm assuming that these are actual uh, transfers, right? Actual local. So it's the federal is not included in that number. Okay. So that would put you closer to the budgeted amount when you factor that in. Um, yesterday, I mean the other day when I was um, here, I was asked to bring the local numbers. Yeah. So that's what you have in front of you. Federal yeah. is up to date and paid in for. And, and the, the concern is, is, is for the people out there is that year after year fall behind on, on what should be remitted to, to the fund. Um, 
and know in some of these years that uh, there's some, I guess we didn't raise, but like 2007 where it's 1.7, the previous year 9.2, uh, then 8, for 2097, for the employer contribution I'm referencing, and then the 2011, it reflects 3.3, and then 2012, again, jump back up to 7.4. Uh, what was the, the factor for the 3.3 drop? 3.3 was primarily because of the fiscal crisis that we faced. Um, in my first week as secretary, the CC turned off power to the entire government. As a matter of fact, I walked PSS. right into cabinet. What is around the PSS yeah. uh, shutdown? Yes. So we were in severe financial crisis. We were struggling to keep the hospital floating. Um, we were we were delaying payrolls primarily because we had to fund the hospital and you know get medicine, get blood, um, pay our doctors, and so on. Um, it was a time of severe crisis where we were considering things such as reduction in force and um, laying off our workforce and so on. I believe that's also when CUC's um, rates skyrocketed, if I'm not mistaken. I think their rates, I think the LIAC rate was implemented on this year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, when I walked into my position, one of the hardest things was that we were playing catch up on virtually everything, not just retirement fund, our payments to every agency, our every every vendor, and so on. We've made significant progress over the last year, two years, with the revenue that we've seen. We've caught up on a great deal of our obligations to our agencies, our vendors, and so on. That progress continues. In 2012, we were not late with any payments. We made we paid everything to retirement fund in full up until the time when the bankruptcy proceedings started. At that point, we stopped and only remitted um, the payments to the health and life insurance and the employee contribution. And our primary reason for that was because we did not know what was going to happen with the bankruptcy. We did not know if we were going to take responsibility for our retiree payments. And before we remit money to the retirement fund, we needed to know if we were going to pay our retirees. So when the uncertainty was resolved, that was when um, we began making payments again. If it will bring any comfort to um, everyone present, in the last month we have actually remitted more than $1.5 million to the retirement fund in an effort to catch up on FY12. It's my hope that we'll be caught up before the end of the calendar year and we'll be caught up with FY13 as well. And because we're making smaller payments um, to retirement fund for employee contributions, we're actually going to be able to go back. All of these payments that we need to make are booked in the system, and we have been making payments. The problem is that most of the time they're late or they're not applied to the correct, I mean the current pay period, but the payments are going through. Uh, what's the... What's the cost for the, the significant drop in, in employee contribution? Have we lost that many employees or, or, or resigned or withdrawn from, from the or, or, or What's the cost? 3.9 for 2012, uh, 4.2 in 2011, and 5.2 in 2010. Uh, Again, I'm guessing that the conversion of employees to the DC plan have, as employees leave and re-enter employment, they don't come back in under the DB plan, they come in under the DC plan, so we wouldn't be making this that big a contribution. Um, we also have had a significant amount of our population leave government and move to the states or elsewhere, so I, I think that's just a sign of the times, but I, I'm guessing at this point. Now, aside from the, the employer and employee contribution, numbers, uh, is there anything else uh, or are, are the transfers for the various other activities, uh, are those 
full remittances or transfers uh, from, from those activities or, or <laughs> maybe I'll let you answer that. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as our standard obligations, GHLI, Fed Health Insurance, COLA, um, all the different things that we pay, those are up to date and current. Um, when I came on board, we were behind with um, hotel occupancy and container checks. We're very close to being caught up. As I mentioned earlier, we gave uh, more than 740000 in the last month. So we're making significant strides to catch up in that area as well. Um, in the court judgment, there were also other obligations that were added. There were death benefits and other obligations over the years that have accumulated. We paid those off as well. Um, we're making progress. It's a slow process though because we're working with such a limited amount of money. Last year I only had 102 million to work with for an entire government and it doesn't go very far. But as the extra comes in we've made, we've caught up. Pretty much caught up. I, I, I'm confident we're going to catch up in the near future. I'm, my goal is the end of the calendar year for um, FY12 and as much yeah. as possible for FY11. Any other members? Representative De La Cruz, then Rep. Vice Speaker. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Secretary. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I wanted to, to, to ask you, um, what is the, I guess, ideal number of, uh, or the total number for employer and employee contribution at this point in time. Uh, the House and Senate recently passed the $10 million appropriations for the retirement fund. Uh, would you say that that amount is sufficient for the fiscal year 2013? Well, our target for retirement fund is 60 to 65 million. Um, so that is just what we're going to be contributing as far as the budget goes um, as for the appropriation. There's about 50 to 60 million dollars in outstanding contributions owed by the autonomous agencies that have not been paid in. Just getting them to pay in full would help us to cover that. But even partial will contribute towards that number. Um, Overall, we're just, our target is payment because our retirees need to get paid. Um, as, as each year passes, of course, that population will decrease and the amount that we will need to come up with each year will shrink as well just because that's the nature of life and um, the people that we're trying to pay in that payment group. Um, it's our hope that we would withdraw very little of the corpus, um, I believe. We were aiming for 30 million per year if we had to touch the corpus. But if we could get autonomous agencies to chip in just what they owe, we wouldn't have to touch it as much this year. Um, I don't know if that's answering your question as far as the target, but it's whatever it would take to pay our retirees every year. Okay. And um, given the situation at hand where um, public law 1782 the withdrawal uh, bill. Have you been keeping up with the situation at hand? And do you see a great number of uh, DB uh, employees uh, applying for, for their withdrawal? I don't have the numbers for the autonomous agencies, but just from executive branch alone, we have close to 700, 700 people who have already requested to withdraw. I think we're going to see a significant drop in the number of active members who are uh, part of the DB plan. Um, that's part of why I'm convinced that this $300 million number is going to change because we are going to have less in the future. And, and how many total local DB plan members do we have? Uh, you stated 700 have already applied. Oh, what number is the rest? 
now you have me on the spot. I'm blanking. I don't remember. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm a DB plan member myself. Uh, just like others here. And we haven't really made a decision whether to withdraw or not. Whether to stay and pray that um, we can retire as defined benefit uh, members. So I guess uh, there are others out there who are probably thinking the same. And the reason why I asked you uh, the, the number of uh, locals uh, that are planning to, to withdraw is because if for some reason or another uh, the rest aside from from the 700 number decides to say I'm gonna stay with the DB plan then I'm not really sure whether uh, we would be reducing the unfunded liability uh, mind you, the, the uh, continuation of, of such employer and employee contribution. Nothing is set in stone right now and we can only hope that uh, others will follow and, and fall into the SS system. But without having uh, some kind of a clear indication as to uh, what number are we looking at to pull out from the DB plan. I guess we can't really say much at this time until maybe another month or so. Well, would that be a correct assumption? I think that having the actuary study is really important because it factors in a lot of these details. I think we'll also have a better idea of how many people are pulling out by that time. Um, we're supposed to be provided a list every every Friday that should give us an idea. So far we've been provided with one list, so, but it's a rather significant number. I believe the paper was reporting more, close to 2,000 people on, in, the, in their report. And from the people I've talked to, majority have expressed an interest to withdraw. It's not, in a, not a decision to be made lightly though, and we caution everyone to weigh all their options look at what's out there and see what's best for them. But I, I think a month is about a good amount of time. The, uh, the revenues that uh, were realized uh, recently, the additional $12 million to be exact, uh, from what I've, I've, I've gathered that uh, that was uh, through the efforts of aggressive collections. Uh, is that correct? When I first came on board, there were several um, actions that were taken against different um, taxpayers, and those are coming um, coming up. We're very confident we'll receive that money. Um, a portion of that is a projection based on just what we've seen with our tourist numbers um, and with the investments we're anticipating at the various hotels on island. But most of that would be enforcement. Do you believe uh, another factor would have been the reduction, the big reduction uh, uh, on budgeting uh, the hospital? One thing about taking the hospital out is, and a lot of people say we didn't give the hospital a budget, but we factored in the revenue that they normally receive as a hospital into um, the reduction. Typically the hospital can collect at least 18 to 20 million just from Medicare and Medicaid and its various insurance providers. Um, and it's been a standard uh, amount that we could rely on. And of course, with improved building and collections, that number could always increase. Um, by taking out that revenue and not um, merging it with the general fund, the hospital gets full revenue. I truly believe that um, better collection, better billing, um, is all the hospital really needs to sustain, sustain itself. 
Um, have you parted those words or or statements to CHC or the CEO? Uh, if not, then I believe uh, you know the CEO is uh, is ill-informed as to whether his collection efforts are uh, unsatisfactory. Uh, just by realizing twelve million dollars for the CNMI and uh, looking at the health facility not being able to collect uh, for services is uh, very disturbing, if I may say so. We've had many meetings over the last year just discussing this whole transition, and the transition is still ongoing. Um, we've been trying to support CHC as much as we can, but when we dropped the revenue down from 122 down to 102, that drop was the removal of the CHC revenue, because we can track you know, how much the hospital brings in. Um, there's also been some changes work with Medicaid where they revised the state plan to ensure that the Medicaid funding stays centralized at the hospital, that's also going to help. I think we're going to see a lot of the steps that were taken in the last year um, helping the hospital out. Um, it's really critical. We have a an assessment going on that should also guide us as far as cost-cutting measures, um, what we need to do to move forward, and so on. But really, the concentration needs to be on building a collection. When we did our drop in revenue in 2011, the primary reason we had to was because the hospital wasn't collecting at that time. Um, they hadn't made several, um, they hadn't collected from our big insurance providers and so on. So that um, decreased the revenue available to us. And we had to use other general fund revenue to cover hospital operations. At the end of the fiscal year, all the collections came in and the hospital actually exceeded its budget by about two to three million dollars. If that collection had been steady throughout the year, we might not have needed to drop the revenue. And with better billing and um, better collection techniques, that number can only increase. Thank you, Secretary. How are you, Mr. Chairman? Vice Speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, maybe this is going to go first to the legal counsel, our legal counsel. Uh, when did we uh, actually suspend uh, we have the suspension law, and what did that law specifically say? The suspension the of the revision of uh, remitting uh, the, our employer's contribution. Uh, what did that uh, law specifically say? No, no, but just, yeah, just very briefly, what is your understanding of the law? that we suspend transmi uh, transmitting uh, uh, the share to the retirement fund and uh, that uh, begins uh, fiscal year 2006. All right, so, so if that law was in place, uh, nice. what can we the council is asking now? for a short recess. Oh, I'm sorry. So he can look it up. So, short recess.